and welcome to this little video about backdrop design on now on CSDB, uh, the update to version 1.34, which is a big jump from some previous versions. It's been a while since I updated uh, this file on CSDB, let alone upload uh, a decent version of it. So it's now up there and you can download it. Uh, I do have an itch page with loads of information on there and uh, on the edge page it's a paid product but this is more for the CSDB guys who want to make some art real quick using Backdrop Designer as a tool uh, not necessarily a, a one-click solution it's nice to uh, really make nice artwork so I'm going to kind of talk you through some of that um, just now so I'll just go ahead and put that open so I've made a build on my drive and what you want to do is go to your drive where it uh, where you've downloaded it and in this case it's this one I've already extracted it and things like that um, like here and when you load it it's gonna uh, ask you for a certain location where you're gonna store your brushes now I've already done that and uh, before and a lot of the things that I bring in end up um, and here so these are your your brushes they are full um, full pixel you know rasterized images it's not uh, immediately obvious how to get into the Commodore 64 type style but all you want to do is just slide this pixel mode to the right one little notch and that's it in a kind of C64 kind of mode there's no restrictions there's no color bleed check or or um, uh, anything like that. You do get the, the little blocks here to give you the, the 8x8 areas. So it's up to you up to you if you want to check for the, the colour bleeding or the you know the whatever you call it where you're using too many colours per block. You can't uh, assign the background colour. It's not really specifically Commodore but it uses a shader that uses the palette and after that you would put it through any sort of processing uh, for example, you could upload it to mcdraw.xyz, let it do its own changes, and then manually fix the blocks. Or you can, you know, use the pixel brushes. That's set eight. They give you a lot of the the Commodore pixel size brushes. There, you just have to reset by right-clicking on this part here, and that's you now got uh, these blocks. It automatically does dithering for you which is kind of nice, but I don't recommend using it all the time. Like if you want to do a digital image of something, yeah, that's it's a really handy tool for, for that kind of thing. But generally, you know, conversions are kind of frowned upon, I think, and it's good to make your own changes to things, especially when it comes to refining it. You, we don't want to get too lazy. Um, but there is nice dither modes that get you started and I have used this for a couple of things like my my um, visitors subtle inter intervention one was completely created here there is a YouTube video that shows that process um, but I still had to you know make the brushes and this is my tool of choice for that kind of thing because it feels um, a bit more liberating than going pixel by pixel um, but everything's a tool these days and I don't want to make up excuses for the laziness or anything like that. It's still, a, you know, you want to be able to be as creative as you, you can be. So using this tool, uh, as you draw, it's you click once, it plots down the brush. But if you hold down shift, it does loads of plots. There is a plot memory system for the undo and redo. If you if you want to bake all this down and reset the memory, you just click on the, the merge all function. That'll merge everything you've done. Sometimes you get little changes, so you just just have to be mindful of that. It will alter it a little bit, but it's definitely still going to give you, you know, an impressive result. And you know the gradients is all automatic. It's all working through a shader that's got a lookup table for the Commodore palette, and it also does the automatic dithering. You've got different modes here. Um, there should be enough dither types. But if you want to get in touch and suggest a different sort of dithering setup, like this one is the, this is the full bare matrix dither, you know, your classic one. This one's just checkering, so it will try to imitate the colors based on checkering. 
um, this, uh, oops, wrong one. This one is similar to checkering, but it's using the horizontal lines to get um, new colors. As you can see, it's doing some mixing here automatically. Uh, the next one is uh, vertical lines plus, uh, I guess, varied, varied dots, we'll call it, and staggered dots. And then this one is staggered dots and lines. Um, which is a kind of popular one these days. Uh, I really like this one. You get a few more shades from it. Uh, if you squint your eye, you see a lot more tones. And a good way to check this is to, let's just do control backspace to clear all the plots. A good way to check this is to make the, the bottom color black and the top color white. And you can really see, especially down in this sort of pixel perfect view down here, um, you can really see the, what you get there. You can play with the, the other range they'll bleed through each other a bit more and you can play with the, the blend modes just to see if you get a better result so these first three blend modes are kind of similar the last one is much darker uh, you get a darker result from that so you can try bring in like any image you want and see how it converts for example here's one I made earlier this little smoking guy I'm going to bring it back to original colour so it was the black and white tones that I made it with and I'll just uh, scale it to fit, that's this bottom one down here. I'll just plot it, scale to fit, and that's going to plot that down. Play with the dither range, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. So I made this in, as you can see, I made this in um, something else. I made this in Clip Studio, I think. Um, and then I've just brought it in here, and I made it with the mindset that I'm going to convert it to Commodore anyway, and and then I can play with the dither ranges and kind of cheat a little bit and get a good head start. But it still needs a lot of work. It needs a bit of refinement uh, with the shape and stuff. But something like this can really help to speed up the process, I find. And that's the kind of point of it. So imagine I was happy with this. Maybe I spent another hour or something cleaning it up. Now I can do that here and go to set 8 and go to the pixel S pixel C64 that's going to give me pixel size just need to reset the scale by right clicking any one of these uh, little scale up and scale down things now I've got the exact pixel I'm going to do all and right click that's going to set all the colors to the pixel color just make sure I need to go to new color not original because all of these are white by default now I've got that gray and I can use shift and drag and draw over some of these little bits to fix them up. I'll alt and right click to make all the tones black. I think it's only the first tone that matters anyway but I just like to right click so these all become black. So right clicking makes them all but left clicking just makes that first one uh, go that colour. So right clicking is just way to go and it's going to try and use the that colour anyway. So right click and alt it's going to give you that like so and I can fix that up a bit. Uh, then I can bring in this overlay grid and it gives us the 8x8 grid so we can do any sort of manual checking so let's assume the light grey is our, our background colour so we've got three colours over and above that so there, there's one, two, three, that's fine one, two, three, that's fine in fact that's only two, there's no black in there there's a few bits of brown, there's one, two, three, four and black so I would correct that manually there but there's easier ways to do this um, you could put it into something like MC Draw, but the only problem with that is it's going to assume your background colour is black when you upload that file. So use anything else that you think will work. Um, uh, I think I use Gang Ed 2 as well, sometimes for, for cleaning up the colour restrictions. But let's say I was happy that, with that. Um, I actually have my, my logo embedded, uh, a little kind of secret code to get that in and then I can bring that in. This is a slightly older logo but I always use variations of this one, just my little RR one and I'll plant that down there. Quite happy with that. Um, it's going to export the document at 1280 by 800 which is four times the size that I want. I don't have an export to um, PRG or KLA or anything like that with this but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go up to export image as it is as uh, the desktop uh, let me just test this because there's a problem with it saving to my desktop probably because the admin rights or something like that but let's just try that again 
yet at Lynch show, so I'm just gonna make sure I save it to the same, maybe the same drive or something. Back drop designer, let's do created, uh, I'll call it the old smoker, right? Old smoker, and now I'd go to something like MC Draw XYZ. Okay, and then I'm just gonna import that. Now there might be a slight issue with it. Let me just try to find that file again, backdrop designer, created and old smoker. Uh, it has done something like it's offset the positions a bit because of the document size. So I'll go to another site called Photopea and I'm gonna open that file, Let's see if it comes up. Yeah, that is all good. Um, it's got a bit of transparency, I never noticed that before. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste it a few times. Just get rid of that transparency and merge the layers. I must have clicked something earlier. And now that that's done, I'll change the image size to the correct values. So 320 by 200, don't do any uh, resampling. So nearest neighbor, uh, I can turn that off. I think it's the same difference. So no, just keep that on actually. Um, pixels 320 by 200, nearest neighbor. And now it's still pixel perfect. Nothing's really changed there. So I'm gonna use that one. It's a bit of an extra step, but it's fine for now. Um, I may introduce exporting to uh, KLA and PRG in the future. I'm kind of learning how to do that. I'm very I'm kind of new to this stuff, a bit younger than the generation that did all the, the demo scene. Um, you know, I'm pretty much an 80s baby, so a bit younger than a lot of the guys here. So I'm gonna import that image this time. Uh, sure, it's this one. Oh. Uh, I forget where I downloaded it. This one, yeah. Okay, so now it's fine. I don't want to do any dithering here. I don't want any extra stuff. I'm gonna leave everything as it is and just say accept changes. And everything looks good. It has chose black as the background color, which is fine for this image. Um, as you can see it there, and I can do any color check. It already did the color fixing itself and that process of loading it uh, and checking it has already fixed everything. And to me, because this image is so simple, it looks pretty fine. But now I can come in here and be like, okay, well, there's other things I don't like. Maybe I don't like these dots here because they're kind of getting in the way of my little logo. And clean up some bits here. So the good thing is I can come in and refine bits and not just call it a day with the, the simple conversion. It is really handy for that. and. A lot of the tools that I've made in the past have been based on conversion, uh, working from uh, modern modern tools like Photoshop and stuff like that, and showing a lot of processes of conversion, but I don't like to call it a day there. And a lot of the times my artwork is gonna be specifically designed to use on the Commodore, so I'll be very selective about colors and stuff like that. So it's not completely cheating, it's just another tool. Um, all, all these things are tools at the end of the day. We're talking about digital digital technology. Uh, it used to be back in the, the day, I would sit with the joystick clicking up, down, left and right, and mind numbingly making up a picture, constantly having to zoom out, constantly having to check the whole image to, to check what I was making and you know come up with a process and it took you know probably about a week to make one image so things are much faster these days and i guess that that brings merit to like spending a bit more time after converting something so just converting something and throwing it into uh, some kind of database like csdb isn't necessarily a good idea but if you did use this process it's good to you know give credit tell tell us what you've used um, so if you want to know a bit more about how to use this tool for other things, just go to uh, itch.io, uh, backdrop designer, and hopefully that came up because I really spelt that wrong. Back draw designer, no, 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 backdrop designer, right, and it's going to come up there. Uh, you can also support me by buying it. Um, as I say, you guys that are in the CSDB, you're getting this for free. There's a whole lot of images here, but not loaded for some reason. Let's just click that again. Yep. And 
a whole mix of stuff. So there is stuff that's Commodore 64 style with a crazy CRT overlay. Oh, I want to show you that real quick because that's quite nice. Um, so I can click this button here and bring the grid away and you get this nice CRT type of effect. Um, really just for show, for fun, it is a tool that's not specific to Commodore 64. It does a lot of other stuff. We can switch it to these other modes and it doesn't break the pixels. We can go back to the original one. The point is when it's in this mode and you export the image, it's going to give you what you see there, especially if you've got CRT mode on. So just be careful with that. Um, switch to all these different modes. We've got uh, Sega Master System, um, custom palettes that I've created. You can change the, we can keep the same Commodore ratio and then use override palette. And that way we can switch through these palettes and see how it looks with the cool Commodore size pixels, which are really great. We can do like monochrome as well, all the way to these other ones. I'm going to look at the, see monochrome here and increase the dither range. And you can really see how effective that is. Um, in the different pixel blends. So all of this is kind of non-destructive. You can go back and forth with this, bring it all the way back, turn off the override. We're back at Commodore. We just bring that, that um, to the range back down and get it to where we want. We can also do other stuff like, because we're on layer 10, it looks at any brush in this layer. And if you click preview, <laughs> we can actually do weird stuff like swap the colors out. For example, if I click this or this, or this, like any one of these, it's going to change the, the the gradient. Anything that's black is black. Anything that's white is green. And we can do some crazy inverted effects as well. So it could be handy for um, for people that are used to working in the modern world. You guys are a lot older. You've used a lot newer tools. You want something that's a kind of hybrid between new and old. Then this is definitely you know a cool tool for that. Um, but don't take away the nostalgia too much, you know, definitely put in your own um, your own little bit of work in there, your own signature to it. So, yeah, I mean, I really like that and it's not as easy to do that uh, later. So that's pretty much for, uh, for this video. Hope you enjoy using Backdrop Designer and I'd love to see what you guys make. But definitely credit, credit me for any, uh, you know, using the tool if you can and also it'd be great if you could um, support me financially from it and to help me kind of make more cool features. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll keep I'll keep making these tools when I've got a bit more time as well. So thanks for watching this one. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.